Hey, how's it going everybody? I hope that you're all having an amazing day. In this video, I'm going to briefly cover the upcoming Halo Infinite playlist update and give you guys my opinion on whether or not this should be celebrated as quote 343 listening to the community or if this is just some sort of PR move to make it seem like they are. If this video helps you out at all, then help me out by hitting that like button, but let's go ahead and cut this plug and get right into it. So I want to start this off by saying that the upcoming Slayer, Free For All, and SWAT playlists all have me incredibly excited. Ranked has been fun and all, but these three playlists are the core of what I enjoy in Halo multiplayer. But the fact that I even have to be excited that they are going to come out with these playlists post-launch which are central playlists to the arena shooter genre in general, let alone Halo, I don't think that this is something that we should be thanking the devs for. In fact, I think that this was just done as a PR move. I mean, at first when they came out with that ridiculous reasoning, and I mean, I'm not going to quote any of this because I don't care to look up or read that seven page thread again, but to sum up the reasoning behind not releasing Slayer on the 8th, let alone the 15th, which is when multiplayer actually launched, was because some UI was unable to handle it, back-end issues of any small change could cause massive bugs, blah 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 blah, and at first, I, I bought into this. I said, well, okay, whatever. But then I watched a Griffin Gaming video where he pointed out the fact that a Slayer-only playlist was active during a portion of one of the flights. I was like, oh yeah. Then I thought about how Fiesta Slayer is essentially Slayer as well. And that was just in the game like a week ago. So this whole reasoning that they gave us is just absolute insanity. And I'm just now on the side where I think this entire thing was a setup, intentionally set up as a PR move to make it seem like they are listening to the community, even though they could care less. I mean, they could care less. Watch customization never get fixed. Gonna be locked to armor cores, you know, uh, the Yori armor core is going to be left in the dust come season 10 because you're not going to be able to put any of the attachments from the Yori 2.0 armor core that they come out with in season 10 on the Yori 1.0, whatever, stupid. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments, but that's all. That's all that I have for this video. Stick around for the rest of this 33 kill ranked win if you guys want, but I hope you all have an amazing day. I'm out. It's yours. Keep it that way to score. Ball drop. Hold on to that and we win. Active camo inbound. Seize the ball. What a shot. the ball.
Killing spree. Double kill. We have them all. A fitting commendation. S7 sniper. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot but buy our security of one nation under God. Our freedoms in Christ our Savior from the threat of the devil any longer. Now let's set the record straight. There's no argument over the choice between peace and war. But there's only one guaranteed way you can have peace and you can have it in the next second. Surrender. We're at war now with the most dangerous enemy that has ever faced mankind in his long climb from the swamp to the stars. Where then lies the road to peace, you say? Well, it's a simple answer after all. If you and I have the courage to tell our enemies there is a price we will not pay, there is a point beyond which evil must not advance. Or better red than dead, or as one commentator put it, he'd rather live on his knees with his mask on than die on his feet. And therein lies the road to war. Because those voices don't speak for the rest of us. And it gives us no choice between peace and war. Only between fight and surrender. Eventually we will have to face the final demand, the final ultimatum. And what